Hi, this is Dan Groninger for GE Inspection Technologies. Uh, welcome to this, our second in our series of instructional videos related to the Mentor EM, or Eddy Current, instrument. Um, in this video, we're going to look at some of the basic operation of the instrument. Uh, as you can see on the left here, I have the uh, camera pointing at my instrument. You'll be able to see how my hands uh, interact with the instrument, how we open menus, some of the gestures involved in, in operating the instrument. And on the right, you'll see a, a high resolution remote view of the desktop on the instrument. Uh, this, uh, this mode is very helpful for uh, instructional purposes. You can use this uh, in a conference room setting, for instance, to uh, be able to show the video from the instrument on your on a projector to an overhead screen. Uh, we also have available a special uh, connectivity module for the back, plugs into the uh, port on the instrument for uh, computer peripherals, and it gives you uh, digital video output on an HDMI connector that's compatible with many uh, projectors these days and headphone jack uh, so you can get audio out of it as well. Also includes USB port uh, for getting apps on and off the instrument, data files off the instrument, that kind of thing. But if you have one of these modules, uh, they're available from, uh, you can order these from GE Inspection Technologies. It's part number 103M, as in Mary, 1202. That's a connectivity module. So. I have, uh, in the first video, uh, we showed how to connect the charger, how to put the, the various modules onto the back of the instrument, get it set up for operation. We powered up the instrument. Uh, it takes a Mentor EM about a minute and a half to boot. Uh, so once you hit the power button, you'll see three quick blinks of the yellow light, yellow LED, and then the, the cyan, which uh, is a combination of uh, blue and green, blue for charging and green for uh, no alarm coming out at the moment. And we are at our app desktop. As you can see, I have a rather large collection of apps for specific purposes on my instrument. I develop apps for customers and uh, for my own use in, in uh, application development. So I have uh, quite a few things on my instrument here. You can use a single touch with your finger and swipe the list from side to side to work through pages of these. On my instrument, you can see the little uh, bubbles down at the bottom of the screen. It tells me I have four pages and it indicates which page I'm on. The home button will always get you back to here. The plus button over on this side is used to add new apps to the instrument. And we're going to take a little closer look at the settings. So the second button in from the left, looks like a little tic-tac-toe, is settings. So when you hit the settings button, you'll get four choices. The one on the left, the gear, is instrument settings. Second one in, it looks like a little pile of photographs. And that is the files manager. We'll talk more about that. Uh, we'll devote uh, an entire video to the files manager. That's how you get information back off of your box. So if you save settings files, if you save uh, reports or screenshots, anything like that you save on the instrument and you want to be able to get that off to uh, use on your PC to email to people, you're going to go through the files manager to accomplish that. The third button is Remote Desktop. Uh, that's the feature I'm using to give you the video that you're seeing on the right-hand half of your screen right now to see what's going on with the instrument. Uh, I'm using it through wired Ethernet. You can also use this across Wi-Fi. Um, get better performance with the wired Ethernet, so that's my choice at the moment. Uh, there's three choices here. The X is off. There's an icon that looks like an eye, like a person's eye. The, uh, the eye is, allows for a remote view only. The third choice is an eye with a mouse beside it. If I choose that, it means I can both view and control what happens on the instrument from my computer. Um, in this case, I've given myself full control. 
So if I go back to settings, let's take a look at the system settings. So I touch the gear. I have a table of contents of the system settings. The first one is uh, screen and display. This is where my brightness control lives for the backlight of the instrument. Um, won't be able to tell from the, the uh, remote desktop view, but uh, you can, sitting here, you can see the brightness of the screen change considerably. Um, I would advise keeping that as low as possible to uh, consistent with your operating environment. Obviously, if you're out in the sun, you're going to want to crank the brightness up. However, the brighter you make the screen, the more power you consume for the battery. So if you're looking for maximum battery life, uh, try to keep your screen brightness turned down a little bit. That's the, the one key factor that you can control in the instrument to maximize battery life. If you are operating outside, we have two different color schemes available, a light and a dark. Dark works best for indoors. If you're outdoors working in the sun, choose the light option and you'll notice now I have a very bright background. I have black on black text on a white background. It's much more readable in very brightly lit environments. For indoor use, dark is more comfortable and that's my preference. On the regional tab, you can choose the operating language for the instrument. Um, here I have English, but most, uh, most of the languages for the areas where we sell uh, lots of instruments are supported. We're going to stick with English. Radix character uh, determines whether the decimal point in your numbers is a period or a comma. Uh, We'll stick with the North American convention of a period as the radix character. Distance units, you have a choice of inch or metric. Temperature units, degrees Fahrenheit or degrees Celsius. And conductivity units, mega siemens per meter or percent international and the old copper standard are your choices. For time and date, if uh, you can choose your time zone and the format for date and time uh, number dis numeric displays. Um, you'll notice there's no place <clears throat> on this panel to actually set the date and time. That is done automatically anytime the instrument is connected to the internet. So it happens here at the factory before the instrument is shipped out. Um, the onboard clock has its own backup so the, the uh, time the clock is good for about a year and a half, two years uh, without the instrument being powered. If it would ever lose its uh, time set, all you need to do is connect to a Wi-Fi network or a wired network with access to the internet. The instrument will reach out and set the time automatically from a time server. Network, uh, these are the controls for uh, a wired ethernet connection. You'll be able to see your IP and subnet uh, mask in here. These are read only. Uh, all of that is set uh, through DHCP. Wi Fi, if I turn Wi Fi on, the instrument will go out and search for available networks. Um, I don't have any right now within uh, close range, so we're going to leave that off. Uh, but selecting a network uh, is very much like uh, any portable Wi Fi connected device. Uh, it'll give you a list of networks. You choose one. If it's a secured network, it will ask you to enter a password to join the network. Uh, one thing that is not supported for Wi-Fi just now is uh, the type of networking that's commonly used in hotels and things where it's open to the public, but as soon as you connect, it will launch your web browser and give you, uh, take you to a web page where it asks you to enter or accept terms and conditions. Unfortunately, we don't have a web browser built into uh, the Mentor, so right now we don't have a solution to that problem. But if you have a common secured network like you might have at home with a password or at your business, um, it will generally be supported there. Uh, Bluetooth, uh, you can have Bluetooth connected devices. Uh, we support human interface devices and things like uh, telephone headsets, uh, earbuds, uh, so you can play audio 
So, uh, one of the things you can do on apps in the mentor is have videos embedded. <clears throat> if you do that, one way to hear the audio that goes along with the video is by using a Bluetooth earbud. Uh, so earbuds, uh, pointer devices like a mouse, a keyboard, uh, those sorts of devices are compatible and can be connected through Bluetooth. <clears throat> the update panel is where we can update our software. I have a memory stick plugged in that should have a number of updates on it. If I come in here uh, under updates, I can select a location that I want to scan for updates. If I was connected to the internet, and I clicked the NDT Solution Center choice, it will go out on the network and search for uh, an inspection technologies file server that will uh, have each of the released versions of code for the Mentor UT. Since I'm not currently connected to uh, the internet, I've inserted my USB stick on the back and I happen to have one update on there. So I said select location, USB, and there is one update file, 2.1 revision. If I were to click update, it will kick off the update process. That takes several minutes, so be patient um, when you install an update. We always recommend that you have the instrument connected to its battery charger, and the instrument will check to make sure you have more than 15% of charge on your battery before it will allow you to update. So if you had the battery run down and you weren't on your charger, you hit update, it might give you a message that uh, you must charge your battery above a certain percentage before you can continue. So that's where you would update software. If you want to see what software you have installed on your instrument, that's available on the version information tab. You'll see the instrument serial number, instrument name, serial number at the top. You'll have the information, the, the general revision of the instrument at the very top. Software, company info, uh, specific information on the operating system, the version of the FPGA, microcontroller code, and so on. And last on the settings is the hardware test page. And this is where we give you uh, some valuable information on uh, various operating aspects of the electronics, the uh, eddy current specific electronics, a list of power supplies uh, with a good or bad light beside them, uh, some information from the rotary probe, temperatures of the CPU and the, the computer module inside. And up at the top, we have information about the battery. Uh, capacity, charge state, the temperature of the battery, and the manufacturer's ID code for the battery. Um, very important, the battery sealed inside the instrument, uh, but one of the things the instrument does is looks for a very specific model number and manufacturer ID for the battery. Um, it will not allow you to charge uh, batteries other than the intended battery for this instrument. <coughs> so that is everything on the settings panel and with that we'll wrap this particular video uh, we'll come back next time and look at a simple surface uh, inspection app we'll use our weld probe and a steel standard with some notches in we'll take a, a close look at how you might do a, a simple surface inspection so thank you for joining me this is Dan Groninger for GE Inspection Technologies